Uh, one run can take several days on Solexa. Um, uh, maybe Mosa doesn't concern us yet. However, um, there are a few companies who are developing the next next generation sequencing. And uh, uh, what, what they have uh, uh, is, is, is pretty scary. Um, and uh, uh, most of it is actually believable. So it's, uh, there's uh, some vaporware out there, sure. But um, uh, some of what they have is, is, uh, is real. They've shown it in, in small variation. And, and uh, they'll, uh, they're in the process of scaling this up. So one of them is Pacific Biotech. Uh, just a note, I don't have shares of any of these companies. Um, uh, so they do something called single enzyme sequencing. Uh, they use uh, the enzyme that uh, our bodies or m uh, many organisms use to duplicate their DNA. Uh, and they use it for sequencing, which means it's uh, very accurate um, and very fast. Uh, so what they do is they take a single enzyme uh, and they take, again, some glass chip or whatever, and they uh, punch a 20 nanometer hole in this. And they fix this single enzyme in this hole. And then they uh, uh, basically, again, with, with fluorescent markers, uh, watch the enzyme run through the DNA. Uh, and this will actually uh, yield uh, uh, thousands thousands of bases, so very, very long reads with very, very high accuracy. But it's, uh, 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 you might think, okay, it's, a, uh, it's, it's very nice, but it's only one enzyme, but they multiplex it. So they put thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousand, I don't know uh, how many uh, of these holes was each as an enzyme in it uh, on a single chip, and they all run in parallel. And they claim uh, they will eventually do one human genome in a few minutes for $100 announced for 2010, so around the corner. Um, uh, one year and, well, three days or something. Um, <laughs> uh, so so the, this is quite, um, uh, may, 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 maybe the end result is not that extreme, uh, though I, I, uh, I imagine it could be. Uh, and if you, if you think about it, uh, at that point, uh, the sequencing centers like the Sanger will basically die off because every single hospital will have at least one of these. Um, and uh, if, if you come in and you have some disease that even house can diagnose, um, uh, and you have a gold or platinum credit card, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll take a sample of your, of your DNA and uh, pour it onto that machine, and a few minutes later, uh, they, they can tell you, oh, you have this and this and this and this genetic disease. Um, uh, and th there, there are other companies, so there's uh, Helicos, which will do single molecule sequencing, um, which will um, uh, uh, have several advantages. One, you need very little DNA for this. Uh, so here's uh, uh, CSI next generation. Um, and you have um, uh, nanopore, they, they do something similar to Pacific Biotech. Um, some, some social and political news. So I'm living and working in the UK of my own free will. Um, uh, and I, I thought I'd gather some of the, uh, of the news that I uh, heard while I was there, uh, which kind of relate to this new technology. Um, so some, some uh, uh, British scientists said they can predict uh, someone's last name uh, based on their DNA. Uh, this, this only works for males because the Y chromosome is only passed from father to son, like the last name, um, in, in most cases at least. Uh, so. Uh, uh, if, if the police goes out and uh, uh, they find some, some male DNA and they uh, put it through some genotyping or sequencing or whatever, uh, and uh, 
uh, uh, let's say some of, uh, some of your male relatives got into the system somehow, and by pure chance, uh, their DNA looks in some parts like the suspects. Uh, you're on the list. I have no doubt about that. Um, this, is, this is a current situation uh, in the UK. They're very big on these DNA fingerprints, which is a little different than genotyping or sequencing. It's a little uh, uh, more simplistic, uh, but still. So they have uh, 7.5 of the population, some say 10%, uh, already in there. And that, that's people who were not even charged with a crime. They were taken to the police station for some reason, and they took the DNA and then said, okay, you can go now, we have your DNA. Um, um, there, was, there was a suggestion um, uh, that for, for not wearing your seat belt, the police should be able to take your DNA and keep it indefinitely. Um, uh, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think it's in, in, in power now, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised for fighting the terrorists. We will have this soon. You will not be surprised that the European Court of Human Rights just a month ago ruled this database violates basic human rights. Uh, no one in the UK did anything about this so far, and I, frankly, I don't expect they will. Um, so in the last five minutes, uh, I'll just uh, briefly show you uh, why I'm still working with this, if it's so evil, um, because it actually has some, some nice applications. So I'm working on malaria. Uh, uh, malaria infects about, uh, uh, well, up to, up to uh, half a billion people each year, uh, with, with uh, uh, one to two million deaths each year, uh, mostly children under five because the immune system is not developed enough. Um, and so what we do is we, we uh, sequence, uh, we use this new technology to sequence individual parasites that were taken from people, so, so basically blood from the arm uh, is enough to sequence the parasite that uh, resides in the red blood cells. Um, uh, uh, we've, we've taken samples basically from, from uh, everywhere, the ones from the UK you see here were taken from an airport, and no one knows what pe where the people came from, um, so we just put them there. Um, uh, uh, we have 95 samples now, as I said, and here's one thing we actually did with it. Um, uh, when we compare these sequences um, uh, and then group them by, by a similarity, let's say this is a for the mathematically inclined as a principal component analysis. And uh, as you can see, we can tell apart uh, uh, African samples and uh, Papua New Guinea and Southeast Asia pretty well. So th this is Brazil, which apparently is like Southeast Asia, uh, which brings me to, to some other things. We are planning on uh, doing a public website uh, where uh, we will show distilled views of this, so this is a mock-up from, from another paper actually, but we'll try to, to use this technology for, for basically using live data uh, that we can see where, um, uh, 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 where outbreaks are, where resistance outbreaks are, uh, how, uh, how, how parasites move, how fast they move, where they move, if they have roots on which they move, if they move, we'll see um, uh, mosquitoes uh, if they move more with the people because if you get malaria uh, in, in Africa and then move to, to uh, Asia uh, and a mosquito stings you it will suck up some of these uh, parasites and if it infects the next person he'll get uh, your strain that you carried with you. Um, uh, there's also po uh, uh, this could lead to these population networks just, uh, just a mock-up graphic here um, uh, there's, there's lots more uh, we can do with this. Uh, multiclonal infections, so a single patient can be inf infected by multiple strains of malaria simultaneously, which is probably not fun. Um, uh, as I said, how, how the parasites are travel. Um, large scale variations, so parts of the DNA can be deleted. Uh, new genes can be inserted or 
uh, sequence can be inverted. Copy number variations, there can be multiple copies of a single gene, which um, relates to, to resistance. Um, or completely new genes that somehow more or less spontaneously evolved. Uh, and that's it. <laughs>